Hi, I'm Captain Rick Riles, welcoming you to Season 5 of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. And I'm George Labonte, boating editor for Florida Sportsman Magazine. When you're in the market for a boat, you've got a lot of choices. You've also got a lot of options to consider. We're here to break that down and try and identify the features that are going to be most useful to you. Rick, tell me a little bit about each one of the boats we're going to look at on the show. George, we're going to start today by looking at flats boats. Used for sight fishing, reds, trout, whatever you can see shallow. That's as skinny as you can get. Today's version is the Salt Marsh Heron 16. A flats boat's a great tool, Rick. If you want to fish in real shallow water, I agree. But you might like that style of fishing and want to get out a little bit deeper, cross a little rougher water, maybe even go out the inlet. For that, a bay boat is a great choice. Today we're going to look at the Skeeter SX210. George, this may be hard for us to understand, but there are people that use boats for other things besides fishing. Say it ain't so, Rick. George, I'm telling you the dual console. It's a great setup for families that want to be on the water, fishing, relaxing, doing all kinds of things. The Century 24 Resorter is a great entry into that class. We're also going to be looking at a lot of great center consoles this season, Rick. If offshore fishing is your thing and you want the security that a little bit higher freeboard provides and you like the open deck layout for fishing that a center console provides, we've got you covered. Today, we're going to be looking at a boat on the upper end of the range. It's got a ton of features in it, the Boston Whaler 380 Outrage. George, sounds like we've got each category covered. Let's get into it and see if we can help our viewers find out what the best boat for them is. If you're an angler who enjoys sight fishing in exceptionally skinny water, a boat in the flats category may best suit your needs. These lightweight boats are designed to be pulled quietly and effortlessly across shallow water flats in search of wary game fish such as redfish, tarpon, and snook. Casting decks are kept clean and snag-free to aid fly fishermen, and features are usually limited to gunnel rod storage and dry storage compartments to keep weight at a minimum. Larger versions may provide a smoother rough water ride and sacrifice draft in favor of options like live wells and trolling motors. Now, let's join our hosts as they check out the Salt Marsh Heron 16. George, we're on the Salt Marsh Heron 16. It's hard to talk about this thing in any other venue than skinny water. I mean, this is a rifle shot, isn't it? Absolutely, just an absolutely beautiful technical polling skiff. There's so many things to like about this boat, Rick. I was very surprised to learn that this boat was going to be as finished, as nice as it is. Now, this is a new version of this boat, Rick. They've actually retooled all the top of the boat here. This cap and this deck is much more finished than the original version of it. Well, let's be honest. Let's call it straight up. I've seen boats that cost three times as much as this boat does that weren't finished this nice. And they weren't Kevlar either. George, I'm no skinny water expert, but I hear the word Kevlar thrown around with only the best of skinny water boats. What's the big deal about it? Well, you know what, Rick? A lot of people think of Kevlar. What's the first thing that comes to mind? A Kevlar vest, which is bulletproof, right? Right. This boat right here, you're going to take back into the backwater where you're going to run into a shell bar, oysters on the bottom, rocks. It's not all about strictly grass flats fishing in this boat. Kevlar is naturally going to give you a lot of protection against that type of bottom. Occasionally, you're going to bump into it. You may even run into it, but you can definitely run into it a lot easier without doing the damage that you would to a glass boat when it's Kevlar like this boat. But you know, as little and as light as this boat is, I couldn't help but notice how it handled. It got a little sloppy out there and we're coming around the corner. It was very impressive, absolutely. I mean, this boat also features a built-in spray rail, which you're seeing in a lot of these technical skiffs. Now they build that spray rail into the hull and it definitely keeps a bunch of the water down. This boat really performed well today in such a windy condition. Well, something guys need to consider. You may want to fish shallow water, but you're not gonna launch in shallow water. So you've got to get from where you start to that flat you want to be on so bad. I thought for its size, it did amazingly well at that. I agree. George, when I think about the salt marsh here, and it just screams fly rod at me. It screams skinny water artificials at me. But I tell you what you won't often find is a good live well. This one for a small boat is a dandy. Just under 30 gallons, it'll hold plenty of bait. And let me tell you, I love the size of this console. It's got all the room you need if you're gonna put a scope up here, but it doesn't have unnecessary plenty of room to walk and fish around. Absolutely, and a lot of room from there to the front, a lot of room on that casting deck. Also notice that little bit of a rail there to keep your fly line kind of under control. Very, very nice. It takes more than that to keep my fly line under control, but it's well <laughs> done, I can promise you that. George, they did a number of things that showed me how much time they've spent around fishing and rods and reels. For starters, these staggered rod holders. Staggered one in front of the other so you can put four rods on each side rather than two like you typically see. And you know what else you can do? You keep them all away from the gunnels of the boat. 
That means you're not bumping your shin or snapping your rod every time you move. But where are you gonna find more storage on a 16 foot technical pulling skiff than on this one? I mean, it's got everything you need in there. There's tons of tackle, there's safety equipment, there's lines. We're in great shape here. A technical pulling skiff like this salt marsh heron might be the very definition, George, of less is more, okay? You think about it, everything's gotta be flush so your fly line doesn't catch on anything and you don't stub your toe on anything while you're fishing up there because that's what this area is all about up here. There's only one reason to be there and that's to fish. Skinny water mission specific this boat is, but it doesn't mean it won't handle the chop to get you there. When we come back, hosts George Labonte and Rick Riles check out a boat in the bay boat category, the Skeeter SX210. This segment brought to you by Fishing Nasara, the best sport fishing in Costa Rica. Fishing Nosara, Costa Rica's best sport fishing. Bite the world's baddest fish with top quality boats, professional tackle, and family friendly English speaking captains. Stay in the authentic nature preserve with wildlife at your doorstep. World class surfing, nature tours, yoga, and fine dining are all at your fingertips in Nosara. Packages start at $700 per person. Don't delay, book today. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join us as we take a closer look at the bay boat category. If being able to fish in a variety of waters is a necessity, a bay boat is a very practical choice. Increased size and freeboard allow multiple anglers to fish comfortably in a variety of situations. From pitching to docks for snook, running the beach for cobia, and trolling for pelagics, their layout generally consists of front and rear raised casting decks with space underneath, allocated for rod storage, fish boxes, and live bait wells. On many larger offshore-oriented bay boat designs, the casting decks are removed in favor of increased freeboard height while retaining a low profile to accommodate a bow-mounted trolling motor. Now, let's join our hosts as they check out the Skeeter SX210. George, we're here on the Skeeter SX210. This is a boat for the guy that says, you know, I don't know everything about laying out a boat, so I want somebody to do it for me. The way you get the boat, their base boat, has everything you need to fish on it. You can add things to it if you want, but you don't need to. I mean, this boat is really set up to go right out the door as a base boat. There's the benefits of buying a complete package. Take a look at the deck on this boat. Now we've got hatches all over the place. There's a ton of storage here, but this is a really unique boat. One of the features I really like about it, every one of these hatches is lined with a roto-molded liner. If you don't know what roto-molding is, I mean, it's the same thing that they make all these performance coolers you see everywhere. It's really tough. It's really easy to keep clean. I mean, it's just durable, but more importantly, it cuts the weight. All that extra weight they can use to put on the bottom and fiberglass and make this a really tough hull. Lengthwise boxes here, you got rod lockers in there. You've got a ton of storage. Your anchor box up here, got a, a nice hatch below your feet there where you can keep your cast nets and keep them out of the way. That's really handy too. I mean, it's just a really thought out deck design. Well, think about how long Skeeter's been around. I mean, there's been Skeeter bass boats. That was their origin sure. forever. And they didn't come into the bay boat market until they had a boat that was ready to go to market. Absolutely. Well, there's a lot of great features back here too. Let's take a look at some of those. You know, we're talking about this boat like it's a pre-rigged kind of boat. It comes with a bunch of stuff. Before we get into that, I want to mention this thing comes with a three-year component-to-component warranty. This boat, everything that leaves the factory, I mean electronics, your pumps, everything on the boat, when you get it from them, is covered under a three-year blanket warranty. George, you can call it bow light to stern light, call it what you will, but when a company does that, it tells you that they know the boat's been thoroughly inspected before it left the plant and it's ready to fish. Absolutely. You know, we get back to the base boat already rigged up with stuff. When you think about that, now you think about base boat, you think base features. There's nothing base about the features on this boat. I mean, this rocket launcher, leaning post, angle cooler, that's all standard stuff. This is like an add-on option on a lot of boats. I mean, this is the boat that you're getting when you get the base boat. I mean, this boat is really nicely rigged. Well, anytime you come with a setup like this, you and I know the advantages of these high-tech coolers. Anytime you come up with a setup like that, it speaks to the company as much as it does the boat. Rick, let's not walk away from this console just yet. I need to point out there's a ton of space in here. This has got a really good storage space. There's a live well in the front of it, but I know you love this windshield. <laughs> Well, if you trailer a boat up and down the east coast of Florida every week, 
you get very tired of the love bugs and the scratches and everything. This and a absorbs. pebble, yeah, you name it. Woo! Would I love to be able to take it off, store it in a half somewhere. So that windshield comes off. Rick, before we move to the back, I gotta point this out. You've seen it before, we love it on the Skeeters. Oh. This latch, how handy is that for that leaning post seat to keep that from flying up? It locks down, I mean, it just. All right, here's a question for you. How many times have you been running the boat and you stood up and the seat came with comes you? Comes with you when you yeah. jump down, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Let's move to the back here. Back to standard features on the boat. Look how useful this power pole is for what we're doing right now. When you want to come up and pull up on the sandbar or if you're fishing, the power pole is another standard feature on the boat. Back to some of the stuff below the deck here. You know, you've got two jump seats on the side. We're both standing on one. You flip those jump seats up, they fold out of the way. You can also get underneath the flip up seat. There's a storage box beneath each of these. Those boxes are a liner. You can pull those out. You can store stuff in them, but you can pull them out and get into your systems underneath there also. Rick, you know we do a lot of live bait fishing around these parts, and it's popular everywhere you go in Florida. We've also got a really large live well here, another bait well in the front, front of the console. You've got two. You can add a third live well underneath the rocket launcher if you want as well. Let me tell you, if you're looking for a boat, you can do light offshore. You can do inshore as hard as you want. The SX-210 from Skeeter is awfully hard to overlook. When we return, host George Labonte and Rick Riles take a closer look at a boat in the dual console category, the Century 24 Resorter. This segment brought to you by Real World Sport Fishing, strongest outriggers on the planet. 50 years ago, Ben and Marie changed boating forever, inventing the trim tab, getting you on plane faster, improving fuel efficiency and performance, balancing loads. Today, more than 1 million systems later worldwide, boats all sizes, Bennett Innovation, durable and dependable trim tabs and hatch lifters, your only source for both hydraulic and electric systems, Bennett Trim Tabs, superior by design, legendary service, enjoy the ride. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join us as we take a closer look at the dual console category. For the family boater who's in need of a multi-purpose vessel, the dual console is an attractive option, excelling at cruising, tow sports, sandbar activities, fishing, diving, and more. This unique deck configuration offers three separate spaces for recreation. At the bow, a lounge area with picnic-style seating for the family. Midship, two separate consoles with a walkway through the center providing a helm on the starboard and additional storage space with often a head to the port. While a gunnel to gunnel windshield and top provide superb protection from the elements, aft, the cockpit is perfect for serious fishing and easy water access. Now, let's join our hosts as they check out the Century 24 Resorter. George, we're here on the Century 24 Resorter. Now this is a little different than a lot of the boats we do on Best Boats. This boat right here has got a very practical purpose for people that love to boat, that love to do things that we're not used to doing, like what we're doing right now, sitting on the sandbar, this boat's got it going on. Well, George, let's look at the name. They call it the 24 Resorter. All right, why go to a resort when you can take your resort with you? What's more luxurious than laying in these? Absolutely, let's take a look at these seats. Uh, George, can you imagine a level of comfort like this in the old walkthrough windshields? I can't. And you know what? If I had this boat, I'd never get anything done. No, that's probably true. You're right. What a perfect place to take a nap. But what having the dual consoles does is it opens up this whole area with easy access right through the middle. And the amount of storage it gives you is massive. Yeah, you know, storage. Underneath here, you've got fish boxes, and this is a fish-friendly boat. We're going to get to that, but this is a great place to entertain. You know, you go out for a sunset cruise, you go to the sandbar like this, and you're riding around. People sitting up here, this is like a really kind of a welcoming spot just to sit around and be sociable. You can also put a table right here and make this really the ultimate lounge area. Yeah, I mean, I could see sitting out here. I could, We could be playing cards right now. Yeah, and I'd be winning at that too, just like <laughs> when we fish against each other. But let's move toward the back because these dual consoles have a lot more use than a lot of people realize. Well, notably, getting in some of that shade. Let's get after it. George, look at this layout. Ah, oh, so of, nice. Of course I love the dual consoles. You don't know what this is for, do you? What's that? For your guests that, ah, maybe stayed out a little too late last night to fall asleep. And we've been known to do some crazy things to people that fell asleep while they're watching the lines. Not me, I would never do such oh. a thing. <laughs> Listen, in all seriousness, this seat has a lot of function. I mean, this seat will go all the way down, make it into a bed. You can put the backrest facing forward or back. I mean, if that's not enough, 
Lift that seat up underneath it, insulated drink box. Right, and George, here's one of the advantages of a dual console a lot of guys don't think about. All right, this is the size of a 24 foot boat console. Sure. It's got an electric head down there, it's got your table that fits in here, and a ton of storage, but then you get to turn around and have the exact same thing Do over Do it there. again, right here. One more thing before we move into the business end of the boat, we can't overlook this beefy top here. If you look at the size of the tubing on this top, this thing is overbuilt. Really sturdy, ruggedly built, tons of shade here. And man, I gotta tell you, as you and I get older, I love the shade more every day. Well, sadly, we're gonna have to move out of it for a minute because I wanna show you the back of the boat. Let's go have a look at this. All right, Rick, take a look back here. Well, let me tell you what I find back here, George. We found a great family boat with a dynamite lounging layout where fishing was more than just an afterthought. Starts out right up here with rod holders and tow bit all the way across. Mm -hmm. Works its way into a great live well slash fish box system, whatever you want. Yeah, now this live well, right, this is actually an insulated box, but you can plumb it as a live well and it's a good size live well. In addition, you've got a live well that's coming with the boat right there. You can put outriggers on this boat. This is a good trolling boat all day long. And I'll tell you what, you're trolling in this boat you're in the shade. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're standing down there where you're at, you get your spread out and start trolling, you take a half a step back and you're out of that sun. This is not little T-top shade. This is legit shade right here. And you can still reach your rods. But you drop this seat. You've got a sink right here to wash off. Little prep station. It's back into a cruise boat in a minute. They cover an awful lot of area. I got to tell you, if you are a fisherman that loves to take his family on the boat, all right, that's where I view this boat as being a strong suit. Sure. The Century 24 Resorter is one that you're gonna need to check out. Absolutely. When we come back, host George Labonte and Rick Ryle step aboard a boat in the center console category, the Boston Whaler 380 Outrage. This segment brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. At Yamaha, reliability is a family tradition. Meet the next generation. Four new advanced technology inspired inline four cylinder performers. Bred from the reliability and boater satisfaction that is part of Yamaha's DNA, they prove that when power gets lighter, faster, stronger, and smarter, boating gets even better and more satisfying for boaters like you. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join us as we take a closer look at the center console category. Deep V-holes paired with high freeboard allow center consoles to accommodate multiple passengers and surplus gear comfortably, while providing a secure platform to venture into deeper oceanic waters. These boats range from an easily trailered 20-foot platform to boats over 40 feet in length with amenities to comfortably overnight. With their 360-degree fishability, the layout of a center console is a favorite among anglers. However, many are fully equipped to handle the family as well. From bow seating and console heads to oversized fish boxes, pressurized live wells, and tackle stations, a center console is a great option for offshore fishermen and family boaters. Now, let's join our hosts as they check out the Boston Whaler 380 Outrage. George, we're here on the Boston Whaler 380 Outrage. It's not only a big center console, you find sport fish boat features everywhere you look. Well, sport fish boat luxury combined with center console fishing tools. Let's take a closer look at this boat, starting with a cockpit. Well, she's got almost 12 feet of beam. That gives you plenty of room to fish across here, but look at how much you multiply that when you can fish your way all the way to the bow. 38 feet to the bow, 16 rod holders in the gunnels. You can put plenty of lines in the water. There's a 60 gallon live well on here in the transom, which you can actually split with a pen board and make it into two tanks, but all the same feet, it is spacious in there. You know, I love these fish boxes. They're long enough for the biggest wahoo and a whole plenty of fish. But it occurs to me the chill plates are on the bottom. And a lot of people, unless you've spent time in the Bahamas, oh, yeah. you don't appreciate a chill plate. Another big boat feature. Absolutely, Rick. They're beautiful. We've got a huge bilge access right here. All your systems down there, sea keeper, generator, pumps. I mean, everything's in there and room to spare to store other things. Once again, almost every inch of this space serves more than one purpose. Behind me right here is a really comfortable seat that folds down. You've got a side door for when you jump in to cool off or if you're gonna dive yeah. or whatever. Makes access back into the boat so much easier. Loading a big fish in the boat too, absolutely. George, I never have enough tackle drawers. This has got them all over. Yeah, I mean, that's all the space you could ever need on a boat this size. Well, sure. you change types of fishing two, three times a day. Yeah. If I'm marlin trolling, I still want my bottom gear close. 
Let me take you back to that wahoo that barely fit in the six foot fish box. Right. What would we like to do with him right now? Cut him up and eat him? Yeah, how about this? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like a steak that fits like yeah, about there. Big fat ribeye. I mean, could we put a tuna steak there while we're actually fishing? In a New York minute we That's could. Big boat features right there. George, leave it to Whaler, a luxurious helm with a Ricky deck where I can stand <laughs> up and make myself taller than you. What a big advantage when you can see over the bow all the time, even when you throttle up. Absolutely, and what a, I mean, look at the size of the displays here. There's plenty of room for two big screens. I mean, this is really, again, big boat features right here. This is like the bridge of a big boat. And look at how big these seats are and how comfortable they are too. I mean, this is really plush. Here again, that's not boat seating, that's yacht seating. Rick, the reason why this is a bridge deck and not a console is the size of this right here. There's a cabin down there that's got a lot going on in it. You've got a head, stand up, enclosed head with a shower. You've got a microwave oven. You've got the air conditioning we already talked about. You've got a bunk in there that two adults can sleep in. You can send the kids down there to take a nap during the middle of the day in air conditioned comfort. I mean, it's really roomy down there. George, I've lived in a lot of apartments that weren't as big or as plush right <laughs> as, that, as that cabin is, I'm telling you. No kidding. You know, George, I don't think I ever want to stop fishing, and I rarely leave the back of the boat, but I sure can see myself sitting here with a fresh plate of grilled tuna. That's pretty comfy looking right there. I mean, this is kind of an entertaining center right here. But look at this right here, Rick. I mean, back to the comfort side, look at the size of this sun lounge right here. I tell you what, I don't take a lot of naps while I'm fishing, but I can see myself taking one right there. I can see me falling asleep there and getting a third degree burn. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot more than a comfortable bunk though, George. Look at the massive storage space you have below there. Yeah, I mean, there's no end to what you can put inside there. There's rod storage down there. You can put buckets and bags. I mean, just, you can put as much stuff in there as I can fit on my own personal boat. George, if you want the simplicity of a center console boat, the outboard power, the 360 degree fishing around, but you're not willing to give up that big sport fisherman yep. and all the luxury, this Boston Whaler 380 Outrage is awfully hard to overlook. Be sure to join us next week for another episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. When filming for Florida Sportsman Best Boat, the cast and crew docked and dined at Pirates Cove Marina in Stewart, Florida. Family owned and operated, featuring 50 renovated rooms with an outstanding restaurant and a full service 50 slip marina.